Well, TLT is a very interesting, right? Because we know that the 60-40 portfolio got blown out of the water and people really walked away from the idea. And of course, Powell saying, well, we're going to maintain interest rates where they are. Maybe we will actually start to cut them in um, June is a double-edged sword for the market. I, I, people are anticipating that that would be a break, and certainly for certain things it will be. But if the bonds through the TLT start to rally from here, there also can mean a flight to safety. And if it particularly starts to outperform things like the S&P 500 or the junk bonds, which is the ultimate risk on buying junky companies that give high yield when times are good, I think then it becomes more fair warning than, oh, yay, we're going to cut rates, but wow, what's happening that all of a sudden we have to do that? The confidence in the economy, maybe not so much. And of course, that could also spur inflation with the dollar fall as well. Right, understood. And then you have a couple of names that you actually own and like. Um, totally different from each other, I feel like, um, because CrowdStrike and Alibaba. Tell me about <laughs> those names that you have been involved in. I don't know if you add position and pull back or how you do it, but CrowdStrike and Alibaba, you like those. Well, CrowdStrike, obviously, cybersecurity. So that is a trend that has been doing very well. Of course, we all know that Nancy Pelosi bought Palo Alto. We're not in that. We're in, cyber, uh, in CrowdStrike. And, it, and another stock that reported well and has come off. But these dips for us are buy opportunities. So I'm watching right now. We, we've been holding it for a while. But if it holds around this 3, 312 level, I think that might be a good opportunity to get back into it. I think risk control, by the way, should be in everybody's mind, no matter what you're buying. And then moving over to Alibaba, uh, we started buying it, and this is from the discretion side, at $69, just because on a, it looked technically ready to bottom. And then right after that, there were all the announcements about uh, different type of stimulation China was doing. Jack Ma had bought the stock. And essentially, as a company that has bulk selling uh, internationally, uh, it, it doesn't feel like a stock that should be worth less than $69. Now it's trading at around 73 And I would add to that, potentially, if it can get back over, say, $78, because it's gotten up close to there a couple of times and then failed. So that would be a good breakout point. And I, th and I, and I believe that China's not finished, like so many people like to think, that China just has a very long view plan. Right, understood. So what do you think about, before I get to some other stock ideas, the things that you are watching, I mean, what did you think about some of the other Chinese stocks, whether it's Baidu or Pinduoduo or, um, you know, or anything else, Tencent, JD.com? Well, yeah. Well, Pinduoduo has been something also that we've been in for a very long time. So that's just like a tail position at one moving. I picked Alibaba specifically for a reason, because I felt that the retail area of China was still relatively strong and that the bad news we were hearing out of China was not because the consumers weren't buying. It was more because of the real estate market, uh, some of the crackdowns on tech, and obviously Baba was one of the crackdowns a while ago. And China had rescinded that. So from a fundamental standpoint, I thought that would be safe. In terms of Baidu, I know there was some good news about it today, so it's up a little bit. I mean, I wouldn't discount that either. I just saw a story about the, the, the technology that China's doing on solar and wind energy. Um, so, you know, I'm starting to look at, at some of that potential in, in China, too. Um, my mind, wait a minute, I have to look over here so I can see the name of the stock I want to tell you, but JKS, JK Solar, which is a Chinese solar yeah. company. <laughs> um, that could be something interesting. Yeah, so I think it's worthwhile keeping an eye on for a longer term trend. Right. Yeah, and Occidental Petroleum and Microsoft, quick thoughts there, because uh, would you like back up the truck on any of these soon if they pulled back? <laughs> Well, definitely Microsoft they had, they had bad news today, right? I mean, supposedly Russia was able to hack into it. At least that's what I saw. Um, yeah, I mean, Microsoft, talk about AI, has really not participated when you look at what happened with some of the other companies. Um, so I think that the Copilot app, which I've now downloaded, is phenomenal. 
And I don't know if it's really necessarily gotten widespread mass adoption at this point. But to me, that's the catalyst that could really take this stock up out of this $400 level that it's kind of been trading range in into closer to a $500 level. So we're waiting because it's, it's chopping between like 395 and 420. And, and so that's showing me right now that it's, it's, it's kind of like hasn't reconciled which way it wants to go. And, and if it breaks out, I think it's, a, it's worth a follow.